שבת שלום. Amen. <laughs> Straight to the point, because we are in a planned scam demic <laughs> in 1 John chapter 5, verse uh, 4, right? Simple verse, everybody knows it, I think. For whatever is born of God, which in Hebrew is Elohim, correctly translated, for whatever is born of powers overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Verse 5, Who is he who overcomes the world, but he who believes that Yeshua is the son of powers? Yeah? So everybody knows this, right? That's simple, yeah? So it's, it's, it's telling you the state of being or existence that those who believe in Yeshua should be, right? Verse 4, whoever is born from powers, which we are, right? It says, overcomes the world. Now that word, overcome in the Hebrew, is uh, natsach. Natsach. Nun sare chet. Nun sare chet. Right? Look at chapter 4, verse 4. You are of the powers, you are of powers, little children, right? And have, past tense, overcome them. Natsach, right? You have overcome them. The word natsach, again, because, and everybody knows this one, because he who is in, uh, in you is greater than he who is in the world. Everybody knows that. But nobody believes it. Because we don't see it. <laughs> right? Here's that verse that everybody grew up with. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. It's spoken from head knowledge only. It has not become incarnate within us for it to be realized. Okay? So that same word in, in 1 John 4, 4, not sock, right? You are of powers, little children, and have overcome, past tense, them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. Now, so the word natsach, nun sare chet. Literally, the verb function of that word is to triumph. To end resistance. Right? To grant victory. So, chapter 5, verse 4. Whatever has been born from powers... Ends the resistance, is granted victory, triumphs over the world. Okay, now watch. That word world is uh, olam. Olam. There's another Hebrew word. That's, that's why you have to know Hebrew, because traditional translators translate one word from two different Hebrew words. You will not have repetitive Hebrew words like English and other languages have, to mean the same thing. If it does, it's a different facet of the meaning that is emphasized. This is why you need to learn Hebrew. You have to. Mandatory. Not modern Hebrew, classical, scriptural Hebrew of the covenant writings. Amen? So, Natsat, whatever has been born of powers, who has been born of powers? Us, right? Why? Because we have been covered by the blood of Yeshua. We ask Yeshua to come in and be our king, be our master, isn't it? Okay? Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but the Messiah, the anointing, lives in me. Remember we did an upload on that previously about uh, Mashiach, his uh, anointing. It is literally the spirit of Yahweh Elohim himself dwelling in you because of the blood that covers upon you, right? First covenant, the spirit of Yahweh just moved upon men to carry out his will, but couldn't reside in them. After the second covenant, after the resurrection of Yeshua, and he satisfied the heavenly uh, requirement of the heavenly tabernacle, now, the Father is happy 
he can come and dwell in his creation now, in the hearts of his sons, which includes daughters. Amen? So, we who have been born of powers through Yeshua, we have been granted victory, we end the resistance, we triumph the world. The world, world is a olam. Olam has to do with that which is hidden from you, that which is uh, forever. Unknown future. That's what they call that eternity. They call it forever, right? And in this context, the facet of its meaning is a full course of time. You have overcome this full course of your time of existence. Because we're in a three-dimensional plane of existence, right? It's, it's temporary. The other Hebrew word for world is tevel, which has to do with a fleeting vanity. You see, it's, it's temporary. Our time of existence now is temporary. It's not eternal. It's not forever. In this body, our biological makeup, right? For where it has been appointed unto man to die once, and then after this, the judgment. That's where eternity is, after the judgment of this temporary plane of existence. Do we understand, right? So, in this olam, this full course of time that we are aware of our being, <laughs> we have overcome it. We have overcome it. Remember the word for that they translate as church? The word that they translate as church is kahal. Right? And the function of that word is to gather in organized opposition, assemble the assembly. They gather to implement a plan. What? I don't go to church for that. <laughs> People don't go to church to gather in organized opposition against something. What is that you get? That's the meaning of the word church in Hebrew, kahal. You gather. To implement a plan. You gather in organized opposition. Opposition to what? <laughs> the state of affairs. The world that you're in. Now, the Greek word for world. Yeah, the Greek word for world is kosmon. Kosmon. K-O-S-M-O-N. Kosmon. That's where we get the English word cosmos from. Yeah? Cosmos. See, the, the, the Satan is a deceiver, right? So he got us thinking cosmos is outer space. There is no outer space. That's another upload. <laughs> but the Greek word literally means uh, uh, present order of things, of a secular world. Present order of a secular world, huh? Right? It's... Uh, present order of things, cosmos, right, cosmon, that's what the Greek, that's the Greek word for world, right, that's where, ladies know this, that's where the, the magazine Cosmopolitan comes from, that's a ladies magazine, right, because it has to do with beauty, putting your face in order <laughs> with makeup if you ugly as up. <laughs> in order it was funny point being the Greek word means to set something in order right if you're unattractive you can use makeup to straighten your eyes out you know give the appearance that your nose ain't that big <laughs> put lipstick on in a certain way to make them look bigger or smaller deception Bottom line, that's a distraction, that's a, I digress. But the point is, <laughs> cosmos is a Greek word, cosmon for world, and it means a present order of things. So the spirit of Yeshua is telling John, Yohanan, to say whatever has been born of powers has been given, have triumphed over this present order of things, right? This full course of time or this age that we find ourselves in. You have been granted victory over it, right? 
And he says this, this is the victory, this is the triumph that you received that has overcome the world, your faith, right? Your faith. Now the word faith in Hebrew, we did uh, uh, uploads on that one, is uh, aman. Aman. Everybody knows that word is Hebrew, it's straight Hebrew. It's not Greek, it's not German, it's not Zulu, it's not Swahili. Straight Hebrew. That's the word amen. Everybody around the earth know the word amen. When you say amen, you speak in Hebrew, classical Hebrew, right? Mm -hmm. That's the Hebrew word for faith. Emunah, faith. Aman, amen is the root. So the verb function of that root word is to depend upon, to rely upon, right? So this is what has given you the victory over the world. Your reliance and dependence, your faith, which is the translated word faith, right? So faith means to rely upon, to depend upon, yeah? So after I say something and you like it, or some pastor or preacher or prophet says something and you like it, people get excited. They say, Amen, right? Not knowing that they're telling heaven <laughs> that they rely and depend upon what was just said, yeah? So that's what that means. So he says... So whatever has been born of powers has been granted victory, have triumphed over this fleeting, this transitory age that we live in, this present order of things. We have overcome it, right? And this is that which has overcome it. Your faith, your reliance and dependence, reliance and dependence, Upon who? Verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world? Kosman and uh, Olam, right? Hebrew Olam, Greek Kosman. Who is he who overcomes, who have been granted victory over the, the age, this transitory, fleeting, vain, full course of time that we find ourselves in? Who is he who has overcome the world? But he who believes that Yeshua is the son of powers. What is overcoming? Our faith. Our reliance and dependence upon who? Upon Yeshua HaMashiach and what he has done. In John 6.29, it says, uh, the disciples asked, they said, What must we do that we may work the works of the powers of Yahweh Elohim? And Yeshua said to, him, to them, Yeshua answered and said to them, This is the work of the powers of Yahweh Elohim, that you believe in Him whom He sent. That closes the book right there. All you got to do is believe in Him whom He sent. Do you believe in Him? Everybody says, yeah, I believe in Him. I'm saved. I'm a Christian. When were you saved? When I was born. No, you wasn't. You couldn't talk. You didn't understand nothing. You were silly and stupid and you want to play all day long, <laughs> impetuous, selfish, right? So believe on him whom he sent. I do believe in him. No, you don't. Because your life is not showing that you rely and depend upon him, right? Because if, if you did, whoever says that they are a son of the powers, whoever says that they are a Christian, whoever says they are messianic, right? They would not be submitting to this plan scamdemic, church meetings, assembling, however often you assemble, you are, the purpose is to gather to implement a plan that is not the time to be discipled. Yeshua said, if you abide in my word, then you are truly my disciples indeed, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free, because Isaiah chapter 54 verse 13 says, all your children, when Yahweh sets up his kingdom through Yeshua will be taught by him. Jeremiah 31, 31, right? In that new covenant, I will establish a new covenant when Yeshua sets up the kingdom, right? No one needs to teach his brother, know the Yahweh, know this or that, because all will know him. He will dwell in them. He will put his Torah in their hearts. 
and no one has to be taught by no one else. And because we have not submitted to this simple instructional truth, we are victims of a foolish world that has enslaved everybody <laughs> to do foolish things. Amen? Do we understand? Okay, so how do we get out of it? How do we get out of it? This is that simple, right? So I'll read it again. I'll start at verse 3 this time in, in 1 John 5, 3. Uh, verse 2. I'm sorry. Ah, I'll start at verse 1. Chapter 5, verse 1. <laughs> you know, the word is powerful. Whoever believes that Yeshua is the Messiah is born of powers. Whoever believes that Yeshua is the anointed one is born of powers, right? And everyone who loves him who begot also loves him who is begotten of him. If you love the Father, the creator of heaven and earth, then you love the Son whom he begot, whom he manifests himself through to save you. Yeah? Verse 2, by this we know that we love the children of powers. Right? When we love powers and keep his commandments. When we love powers and keep his commandments. I did a teaching on commandments from the Hebrew perspective. Whenever you obey a command of Yahweh Elohim, you have diplomatic immunity. You're functioning as an ambassador of his kingdom in a fleeting world. And ambassadors have diplomatic immunity in other countries. They're not subject to the laws of those countries. Okay, I did the upload on it. You can check it out, right? When we love powers and keep his commandments, verse 3, for this is the love of powers that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome. In actuality, they're easy. Why are they easy? Because his spirit will enable us to do what he requires. And then, for whatever is born of powers overcomes the world, triumphs. Ends the resistance of that opposition. Remember? Kahal. Church. Real meaning? Gather an organized opposition. What are you opposing? The present order of things in the world that is against the light. Yeshua has ended the resistance. Yeshua has given us victory, triumphed over the world. Yeah? And this is the victory, this is the triumph that has overcome the world. Our faith. Do we really rely and depend upon Him? Or are we really relying and depending upon the government? The, the traditions of men. Yahweh says, "My, the fear of me has been taught by the commandments of men. And the traditions and commandments of men make the word of powers of Yahweh Elohim ineffective. And that's why we don't see what we need to see. Amen. Who is he who overcomes, who have been granted victory, who ends the resistance of the world, this fleeting age, full course of time that we find ourselves in, but he who believes that Yeshua is the son of the powers. Amen. So let's uh, judge ourselves whether we are truly in the faith or not. That's where it begins. That's where it begins. If we judge ourselves, we will not be judged by no one. And I guarantee, if you do it correctly by His Spirit, you will begin to see immediate change. We have a prayer that we pray, Father, keep the world out of our kingdom affairs. Keep the world out of our kingdom affairs. Because we are concerned with nothing but being faithful citizens of His kingdom. Father, teach us how to rule in the reign of Yeshua. Make sense? We haven't been taught how to rule in His reign. We've been taught to submit to frivolous statutes and regulations of men, the meager elements of the world. You see, we, I did the last upload I did on that one, right? That means you're still a child. And if you're a child, you're a slave. And a slave has no rights, has no choices, they just direct their energies towards the will of another. 
the Father has adopted us through Yeshua as sons, which makes us sovereign heirs. And part of that inheritance is the world. <laughs> Imagine. So we need to turn the tide. We need to change the paradigm and switch roles. We are supposed to be the head, not the tail. We're supposed to be above, not beneath. We're never supposed to uh, borrow. People should come to us and we lend to them, not the other way around. So all churches... Be corrected. Come out from the deception. And now, when you gather, you gather in organized opposition. You gather to implement a plan to get this onslaught of darkness off your necks. And set yourself free and Yahweh's people who have been appointed unto life in Yeshua's name. The beginning point is you have to check yourself. Are you really in the faith? We are the light of the world. So wherever light shows up, darkness flees. Is that correct? So if the world, if men are in darkness, guess what? When you come around, they're going to flee or submit to the light that comes with your presence. And you won't be bothered by, you see? From having children, a lot of children, right? Being entrusted with a lot of children, you learn things. One thing we, we learned was that children do not come into the world with a division internally, okay? Meaning, their conscious mind is harmonized with their subconscious mind. Here's a statement we make. A subconscious doubt is more powerful than a conscious belief, yeah? Yahweh said it in Ezekiel in rebuking Israel. He says, you know, Ezekiel was the, the prophet. He said, they come to you, they hear your words, they give you praise, right? They acknowledge consciously, but Yahweh sees the reality of it. Their hearts are far from me. So there's that misalignment, you see? 1 Thessalonians 5 says, brethren, I would that your spirit, soul, and body be found blameless, be harmonized. An example of a subconscious doubt being more powerful than a conscious belief. I say it all the time. People have praise gatherings, yeah? Victory, victorious celebrations about the cross, singing praise about the victory on the cross. We have the devil under our feet, right? We have the victory. I'm a soldier in the army. We walk in victory, right? You know, and then everybody goes home. And a guy stops at a gas station, petrol station, to get petrol at night, and he gets robbed. And he just left the church from celebrate, praise celebration, right? Or prayer. <laughs> you follow me? <laughs> and he lets the guy rob him. But he was just previously celebrating, we got the victory. <laughs> the, the devil's under my feet. So that's an example of subconscious doubt more powerful than a conscious belief. Heaven sees who you are subconsciously, and relates to you based upon that reality. The world will allow you to function consciously as long as you submit, whatever, right? And you can be uh, divided in soul. You can be a hypocrite. The world lets you be a hypocrite. Heaven, don't play that. Sees who you really are. You follow? Children are born harmonized. They don't know division amongst themselves. They learn that through the education system, which we give our children to, and we should not, to the world to raise, to matriculate them in their capitalistic slave employee system, right? We send them away from home too early and put them in public environments with other children who you don't know what type of background they came out of, <laughs> and children automatically will conform to their peers, straight from fear, if for no other reason. They don't want to be oddball out. And that's where they begin to separate from that harmonized state that they're born into. Do we understand? So our children are our fault. We failed them or we served them proper and, mag and they magnify Yahweh. 
No excuses. It's the world that gives you the excuse. No, everybody had their own, you know, I, I did my job right. No, you didn't. If you do it according to the way the word instructs, guarantee they will never depart from it. That's what the word says. And you have to rely and depend upon it. That's what overcomes the world, our faith. Emunah, amen. I rely and depend upon it. The word is true. It is proven. And in Romans chapter 3, verse 4, it says, Let powers, let Yahweh Elohim, let powers be true, and every man a liar. If another believer does not experience the promises, does that make the promises ineffective? No, certainly not. Let powers be true, and every man a liar. I can pray with you and find out why you didn't experience that promise, but I'm experiencing that promise. And Yahweh shows no partiality. Shabbat Shalom. Tanakh Wisdom.